This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a late night edition of the Only Friends podcast. It's only late night for us since we're on the East Coast. For you uh, West Coasters out there, it's a late afternoon pod, if you will. We're on the road, baby. We're coming to you fresh from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, here for the SHRPO main event before we head to the Bahamas. I'm joined, as always, by my favorite cast of characters, young Landon Tice, slave to the sim. And Mr. Tortoise. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> like, I look so small. So small. Po- yeah, yeah. Listen, you know what? I'm going to be the change I want to see in the world yeah. and make you Watch have better posture. a little bit. No. no Why don't you grow up and put your shoulders <laughs> I'm, back? I'm done growing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No, you got a lot taller. I thought you were going to do the intro today. No. <laughs> Just no. But the tortoise will be in the main. The tortoise in the main. <laughs> the tortoise in the main. <laughs> On Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Buying propane. <laughs> You uh, you need to you need to violate that, Michael. Man, I can't hear you. I mean, at all. just you know, your old man ears can't. No, it's not me. I asked the chat. They also can't hear you. Nobody can hear me. Nobody can hear you. How man. about now? Now we hear you great. Okay. So How about now? You're either gonna have to not talk or do a better job of getting. Bring the mic up a little bit. In the mic. Yeah, brought it up. You have to feel you have to feel threatened by the mic at all times. That's it's right. Still a working process, everyone. Well, I gotta tell you, we're talking about your man today, so you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna have that mic ready to go. Jesus Christ, cut off fans. That's immediately. literally as loud as, it, as high as it goes. Okay, good. Now, pretend that it's a hot dog. There you go. <laughs> uh-huh. The tortoise got the glizzy. There you <laughs> the go. We're going to be joined after sports ball talk by the one and only Henry Kilbane as well. He's busy having his breakfast. We're letting since, him cook. Uh, you know, <laughs> he <laughs> is cooking right now. Let him cook, He's my G. Cooking. He's literally cooking. Uh, before we get started with today's show, which is going to be heavily focused on Mike Possel, all the things that were in 2019 as we do our first ever Throwback Thursday episode, uh, we're also going to update a little bit with the things that are going on in the news as of late with him. But before we get to that, we have a real feel-good story coming out of the one and only Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Yinzers Unite. We can all agree on one thing and one thing only, Andrew Cutchin, Andrew McCutchin, he's back. He's back, baby. He's back, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know why I was laughing. Uh, signed a one-year deal. To come back to the Pirates, he was in the division last year for the Milwaukee Brewers. Didn't really do much. Honestly, uh, I thought this was just kind of a PR move. But uh, after watching this highlight video, I got a little bit of the chills. I'm not going to lie. I'm excited to see Kutch back in uniform. You know he's going to have some money. Pittsburgh Pirates select Andrew McCutcheon. The pitch. High fly ball to center field. It's hit pretty well toward the wall. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Andrew McCutcheon has won it! They're going crazy! And call it maybe the best all-time in Pittsburgh! I mean, I got the chance. I don't know about you. I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm pretty pumped for this. Uh, so there's <clears throat> a few things that are worth noting. Uh... One, Pittsburgh has actually been making some moves in the offseason. Uh, they signed a first baseman from... Is he from the Japanese league or is he just Japanese? Uh, he, no, he, he was, he was on uh, the uh, Rays last year. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, that, that seems to be a, a, a talked about free they, agent signing. They got Carlos Santana as well. The musician? No. <laughs> Amazing baseball player. Well, Maria, he's in his la- la- latter years of his career, but... Um, Still has a lot of power. Are you talking about the pitcher? No, oh, the first baseman. The, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Fair. He's probably uh, gonna well, the hey, let's let's not forget they they signed an ace. Yeah, we got Rich Hill, baby. Rich Hill, let's baby. Go. He's he's uh, the next mm-hmm. Jamie Moyer. I think he's forty seven years old. That's last, rich coming from you. Last, <laughs> so he, you know what? He's my uh, age, and we throw the exact same yeah, fastball. He's rich on the hill. Um, let's go. But as 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 non uh, front news as those stories may be the re-signing of a coach actually fills some needs. So I think he's probably going to play less. He's going to be, he's going to be mostly D. Um, 
but he, he'll play some corner outfield. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if it was going to be left or right. Left seems like it makes more sense, but uh, we're all very hopeful that they're still going to re-sign Brian Reynolds as well. The rest of the team, though, is very young. And well, he's on, Brian Reynolds is still under contract. Right, but only for, I think, two one or two more years. Yeah. I, I know he goes to arbitration soon, um, and he's always on the trading block, which is scary. It's, but it, it, There's a real possibility he can trade it. So he's not going to get traded now. Because, right, right, of course. Um, it happens. Um, but if any of you are actually pirate fans, which I doubt any of you are, uh, the, if, if you recall a big part of Kutch helping lead this team to back-to-back wildcard games was the signing of AJ Burnett, a veteran in the clubhouse kind of helped guide a young team, uh, get to the postseason. They obviously got stopped by the Cardinals. That'll be Rich Hill's role. Yeah, that'll, that'll be Rich Hill and uh, hopefully Kutch in this particular instance. <clears throat> but sure. uh, some, some major stats that uh, are actually worth noting. These are pretty big milestones that he's very likely to surpass this season uh, as he is very also likely to retire a Pirate. Uh, Kutch comes into the season with 1,948 career hits, 392 doubles, and 287 home runs with 983 walks. So it's almost certain... He's going to get to 2,000 hits, 400 doubles, 300 home runs, and 1,000 walks. I hope he gets all this. Uh, it would be really hard not to, right? Uh, I mean, how many home runs does he weigh? 13. Hopefully, he come on. 15. We're we're in the. It depends on how much you play. I mean, yeah, if we're he's, in the era he's DH of the, in every day, like people are talking about him being an everyday player still. I hope so. I, I mean, that's. I, I want to see it. I'm that's here for that's it. the rumor we're floating around for yeah. sure. Is that you know he's probably going to play somewhere over 100 games. Um, but maybe he's first bat off the bench in a lot of scenarios. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, look at Pujols this last year. He he hit what 36? What? No big deal. Yeah. Who? I, I I bet there's somebody out there who would take Pujols right now. I, I can't imagine. Pirates would. <laughs> there. Then what do you do? You have two geezers uh, vying for the <laughs> for the DH spot. Which uh, which geezer do you prefer, Landon? <clears throat> Not McCutcheon. Pujols is pretty good, man. I know very little about baseball. I know more about him than McCutcheon. Yeah. <laughs> McCutcheon's from here. You should, yeah, you should know more about him. I should. I mean, Pujols hit 700 home runs. What you should have known was. <laughs> That's a lot. That is a lot of home runs. Um, we have something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, uh, there was a big announcement today with regard to uh, ACR. And I want to talk about this in a couple different veins. Uh, so first, let me just give you the actual news of it. Uh, WPN slash ACR Poker have banned 31 accounts and are paying nearly 30,000 users, a total of roughly $700,000. Uh, and I want to talk about this in a couple ways. Uh, so first of all, I want to, you know, kind of give them their, their flowers for uh, staying diligent and um, continually scrutinizing the security of their own site ensuring that these bot rings get found out that uh you know whether this is rta or botting or some other breach of tocs they are doing the right thing they're seizing funds they're issuing refunds um and you know they should absolutely be acknowledged for that right we don't see a lot of public displays of um let's call it mishaps I don't really know how else to quantify it, right? Like security breaches are just naturally going to happen. So uh, I'm hesitant to to blame them, so to speak. But uh, along the same lines, it's like, you know, it is kind of on them to be on the up and up whenever it comes to all this stuff. So uh, in any event, like, uh, I think that they deserve a lot of kudos for making this right and whether they intended on it or not, it actually going public. Like they alerted the 30,000 accounts that they're getting a refund. Now there is some fallout to this. Uh, it seems as though the refunds haven't actually gone through to everybody that they claimed would get refunds. So I saw Jeremiah tweeted earlier that uh, he was meant to be issued a refund of like $2,400 on his black chip account. Um, but he had only been issued something in the neighborhood of like 10% of that. And that there were no records of him having been issued anything other than that. Uh, he was looking for support from ACR. We'll see uh, how that ultimately turns out. The other angle I really want to explore here, and you guys can kind of give me your opinion on this, is how do we feel about the scale at which people are being affected? You know, we just had Jeremiah Williams on, and uh, he was very confident in the fact that there isn't a whole lot to worry about 
particularly on American uh, facing sites when it comes to online poker these days. Uh, you know, he's very much of the mindset that that cheating is not a problem. And I, I tend to agree with him in the sense that uh, I tend to agree with him in the sense that it's not it's not like if you play online, there's a high probability you're cheated, right? It's not like the app games where where you re- your bottom line absolutely gets demolished by people seeking unsavory edges. But I think we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the fact that these bot rings do exist. RTA does exist. Uh, there are nefarious actors out there who are breaking TOCs all the time. So it's not like it's, it's, it's zero uh, cheating and things of that nature occurring. In this instance, it's 30,000 users that are impacted here. Uh, and granted, that's only $25 per user in this particular instance. So it's not like people are getting hit for a big amount. But I imagine that there's like an unfair distribution of that, uh, that theft, right? It's likely that there are many, many, many people who are affected in pennies. And then a small collection of people who are playing higher stakes that may have been affected for like thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I wonder if like how exactly how it breaks down between cash games. And we think with like 30, with a big number, like 30,000, that it would be like, well, if they protected anybody with higher, pool, higher uh, like player pool of that exact um, tournament affected. By it, right. So like, Usually so that's how they issue refunds. Yeah. yeah. So there's 2000 people in the tournament. They, they found that one person was cheating those 2,000 people. Right. What they'll, the, what they'll ultimately do is they'll take the prize of where the person who was cheating finished, mm-hmm. and then they'll disperse it according to uh, the payout distribution of everybody that it affected. So ultimately, you end up not getting very much. Like, even if the person won it, right. um, you know, it basically gets dispersed to everybody who cashed, I think, or maybe everybody who played with, I, I'm not really sure. The tournament aspect's a little weird because even if you're not playing with that person, them cheating still impacts your bottom line, exactly. which exactly. is really yeah. weird because in the past, uh, it was, it was able to just, or, or like we had agreed, like, okay, it just became an ICM thing for everybody who is still remaining. Um, but I think it's gotten to the point now where, uh, people, understand that like decisions made by somebody 10 tables away still impacts your ev right um you you still need to get closer to the mic i mean i'm as close as i can i, yeah. I mean i could do this yeah that sounds That's, good this is what i want this is what i should do yeah just okay you have to feel threatened by the microphone well i think i think it's probably less than the mic at this I point think the microphone probably a feels setting threatened week. by me <laughs> I think it's when, as it should. <laughs> I think it's when Matt tried to murder you with the light, and the mm. light hit the mic. That oh, could that, be it. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Bill Clinton save you. Yeah, it was a, it was a real uh, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, sixty minutes uh, situation. Landon over here was supposed to play the role of Bill Clinton. And I he didn't, didn't even save know me. what was going on. Yeah, nope, he just looked around. No. I was on my phone, but I was about this close to my noggin smashed in. But we survived. That's what we, the tortoise has a shell for. You have to use it. We to play protect on. Yourself. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we <laughs> play on. <laughs> what uh, what are your thoughts on all this, Landon? I mean, it sounds like if there's a lot of people being affected, it's probably from the tournament side more. And the higher volume of money that goes back to people, like Jeremiah played a lot of high stakes on ACR, right? So there's gonna be a lot of high stakes who are gonna get back a reasonable amount of money from the distribution where most people aren't gonna get back that much because if you're playing a tournament and there's cheating going on in a tournament, it gets dis distributed throughout everyone that's playing right so yeah. when that's the case like in jeremiah's take like he and i have talked about this pretty extensively when it comes to the cheating not cheating and like how much does it really affect uh bottom lines when it comes to like the elite players in the player pool cheating's not going to have that big of an effect as he still thinks that there's ways to be profitable online and, right right like sure is your win rate going to go down from Call it maybe double digit big blind per hundreds to single digit potentially so like instead of winning 12 you might be winning somewhere like seven to eight or something like that but if you still have like a really sick win rate you're not going to really feel the effects as much as someone that's a break-even player that if you're a one to two big blind per hundred winner if there's no cheating but then cheating happens and you go to like negative, negative two yeah. to zero and now you actually can't have any sort of win rate anymore 
yeah. because cheating is apparent. Yeah, you go from a winning to a losing player. Which right. Is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a bigger deal when you're like in the middle, like the middle curve, call mm-hmm. it like super losing already, uh, like average, and then like elite, super yeah. crushing winning player that so it's not gonna really affect JMI and like the super high stakes crushers that are playing anyways, because they know that the risks still exist and that they still have a win rate in those games. Yeah, I think that's a big deal to talk about because when we're framing this cheating or nefarious activity that occurs on, uh, you know, in the online arena. Um, I think that oftentimes we, we consider the conversation as far as like, as we're discussing amongst each other as peers, but that's really not all that relevant, right? Because we all probably have a win rate and sure we're taking a slight hit, but it'll, as you kind of explained, it will be less of a hit the greater your win rate is, right? Because you're just gonna have strategies that will be able to neutralize these types of things. So uh, it, it'll cost you less win rate overall. And you have win rate that you can afford to give up because you're beating the field already by a fair margin. Uh, what ultimately the biggest threat of, of the nefarious activities such as bot rings specifically, which is what ACR I think is notorious for um, being accused of, is that it, it basically becomes like, an additional rake, right? So for the best players, uh, they're more probable to beat a high rake tournament than break even or average players, right? Uh, When are you throwing these bot rings? It really cripples that middling ecosystem uh, that exists where players are kind of on the verge of gaining a win rate or uh, maybe have a win rate, but it's not all that high. And they're in their progression phase where they're trying to get a little bit better. A lot of that now can just get zapped by the fact that these bots exist and are kind of operating one tier above them, which is now suppressing them back down a layer, whether it's down to break even or down to a slight loser. And when that now comes out on the graph, you may just see like a lot of people walking away or uh, a lot of people kind of crying foul that the game can't be beaten for one reason or another. And I think that that's the biggest concern whenever we're talking about uh, these specific methods that seem to be occurring largely on ACR, at least publicly, uh, though I believe it's probably happening like on GG Stars and, and Party a little bit behind the scenes more. Uh, Henry, you're more of a rest of world player. You have any insight on, on these other sites? About the security protocols that they have. Uh, the, the protocols to some degree, but also just like the, the redistributions once they catch these, uh, the, like, is there a communication? Do they, are, are they as forward as ACR, I suppose, with the messaging? Yeah, pretty much. I, I think uh, I, I recall um, Party Poker doing some, some deep dive into some bot rings back in the day as well, uh, and especially in like the Zoom PLO games. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very similar to this where they just did a, a thorough investigation and somehow, I don't know how, calculated the amount of money that had been, you know, allegedly lost to these uh, to these bot rings, and then distributed it, um, yeah, to the players that were on the receiving. And it's the same with stars as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually a big fan of this. I, I think this is a, a step in the right direction when it comes to potentially lobbying um, to bring online poker to more states in America. Mm-hmm. So I like, although this is quote unquote bad because people have been scammed out of money i think this is actually a a net positive overall in the sense that like people are going to see this and potentially you know it's going to assist with lobbying and bring in online poker to more states in america as well so yeah i I think i think you're right in the sense that it's a nice call to attention that there are uh policies in place and that there are mechanisms in place that will catch these uh alleged cheaters i shouldn't say alleged they're obviously caught um I, i do think that there is a small concern that this is kind of the tip of the iceberg and we don't realize how much is going undetected. Yeah. We, we just have no insight, right? So you're just never going to know. Yeah. That part is a little bit, it's not frustrating to me. It's just, it's, it's accepted risk that we have to take on. Mm-hmm. And as I kind of mentioned, the bigger, the winner you are, the more you're, the more willing you are to take on that accepted risk. Uh, and I will echo Jeremiah's sentiments in the sense that I think the more regulated though, you know, I'm not, I'm not super bullish on the idea of over-regulating markets, but the more regulated the poker market becomes uh, in the online venue, the more faith I have that these things are being handled in a above board kind of way. Mm. Now, with that said, I do have very low confidence that Nevada gaming is, or, or even uh, New Jersey gaming and 
these other states that are cropping up. I have very low confidence that they're caught up with modern technology when it comes to policing these sort of environments. Um, you know, I, my best guess is that whatever, whatever uh, protocols or um, language was written into uh, gaming back in 2015, whenever uh, online regulated sites first started to launch, probably is in desperate need of an update at this point. Right, things just move way too fast, and uh, you know personally, I understand why sites like WSOP and other regulated sites, Stars, U, uh, New Jersey, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I understand why they aren't forced to go public with their findings, but I just think it would be tremendously helpful to the community to know that these things are being policed. Yeah, I, I remember speaking with um, the actual security team of Party Poker in Barcelona, the one that Melissa came to. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, again, I, I don't want to like speak on their behalf, but the, the, the work that they put in behind the scenes, like I was asking them questions of like, um, you know, who, who could potentially infiltrate the PLO six max ring? And they were like, well, it could certainly be infiltrated for like a brief window. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously impossible to say like what the, what the win rate of an infiltrate, like uh, a player that has like, got access to RTA or whatever it is would be in let's say a 24 hour time frame um but they are just so on top of it all they were like RTA is the easiest thing for them to catch yeah. apparently yeah, yeah it's just like you've got someone's tendencies over however big the sample is that they've built and then all of a sudden their mouse is moving differently like they have access to all of that um they have access to like you know uh, in Europe uh, income revenue streams per household. So if all of a sudden, you know, my mum Anna Kilbane starts playing uh, five ten PLO online, but then her monthly income is only like two k a month, then you know there's a good chance there's some yeah you know, there's someone else behind that screen right. kind of thing. So uh, I I know that they have the resources. I don't know to like what extent they um like how how they target these bot rings per se, um but I I think it's really positive like the for the overall future of like online poker. Yeah. The security measures that they have in place. And yeah, kind of just to further reiterate, like it's, it's great to see it in America as well because it's needed if we're gonna move forward with it all. Oh yeah, I mean like, let's not forget ACR is probably creeping on it being the second biggest site now. For sure. I, they're nipping at the hills of stars in GG for sure. Um, so this is, this is pretty critical, when I you think. you say second biggest site, you mean like world, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, uh, I'm pretty sure they're confidently third uh, behind Stars and GG. But I think that at least in the tournament realm, they're, they're, coming, they're climbing that ladder pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, mainly because they can service America. Whether legally or not, you know, right. they can Close. still. Yeah. Um, and I do think that it's important for us to keep furthering these conversations because people in America will play there. It's, uh, it's a viable option and it's reasonably reliable, right? So I do agree with you, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's positive to see this pro action taking place. Um, I think that, you know, ultimately this is a job well done, assuming everybody does get refunded. I know there are a lot of people who are saying that uh, though they were issued an email or a, a refund via email, they actually never received it, mm. uh, which is, you know, a little bit problematic, but hey, you know, 30,000 people, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's going to be a day or two to process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something to that nature but it could also that could also be a byproduct of people not knowing what their starting balance was at the start of the day because sure. I, I i've had that before where uh, on gg i've hit certain uh, rake back thresholds mm -hmm. and i'm like seven tabling or whatever it is going on 12 hours later i have to like go through my emails and whatnot to realize that oh actually i did get that rake back i just didn't realize because i was grinding seven tables and i wasn't right. aware of what my balance was at the time yeah 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 i could definitely see that being a factor too but yeah anyway I, I thought it was worth bringing to attention uh we don't again we don't know like what the actual behavior was that got policed but we do know that uh you know thirty thousand people were affected and they are receiving some sort of refunds uh 31 accounts were banned um as an aside, uh, you know, he who shall not be mentioned, we know mm -hmm. has been uh, multi-accounting and RTA uh, there for a fair period of time. Uh, and it's one of those things where it's like, everybody understands it in the high roller scene. Like if you're gonna play a big buy-in on ACR, you're also just gonna play against three or four 
of uh, the world's best who has Jake the, Snake. the world's best machine in front of them as well. Um, so hopefully that was a part of this banning. It would be real. Uh, this is where I think like publicly, I know it's not policy for these sites to uh, kind of out any one account. But like, if you catch an Ali or a Jake on their multi-accounting and RTAing, I think that's a good spot to to spin it for positive PR and just be like, look, uh, we looked into this. You guys were right. They had four accounts each, and they're now all banned. Yeah. Right. Um, but again, like, we're we're not sure. Uh, we'll find out at some point in time, and or I mean, maybe we won't, but uh, I, I think it's probable that we'll we'll hear it through the grapevine to some degree. The audacity, man, of like not only being outed by the, you know the entire community and banned from some of these like live tours now. Um, I don't know exactly which ones they've been banned from, but I, I know that they have been banned from a few. To to just like continue, man, just fuck what, off, man. What if, it, what, what if it was Ali? What if it was just him? It was his account and his thirty one of them. Our, his other thirty. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be dope. Just go and play something else, you know. Like well, there, you made your millions. We're getting to a point where there is nothing else. Uh, to my knowledge, the only the only tour that I'm aware of that has not, uh, I don't want to say publicly because most of them haven't come public with it, but right. they've turned them away. The only place that I know for, or that I don't know for sure, rather, is WSOP, just because they mm. both competed. Last, last summer, WBC. yeah. yeah. Monte um, Carlo was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, like, it was beautiful. The like, actual, they, walk yeah, of like shame. they, they like, sh show up. I think they played the the fifty k, mm -hmm. and then like next day just get turned away. Like the full walk of shame. Yeah. You're in the middle of Europe, kind of thing. That's, like, that's yeah, pretty that's strong. Great. It was great, great for the morale. The yeah, community. that's pretty strong. Uh, and also kudos to Poker Go because I think that they're really the only site that has actually publicly made a statement. And said like they are banned from the Poker Studios and the Aria, uh, so uh, I, like that should be more commonplace in my mm. opinion. Uh, you know the the EPTs and everybody that turned them away, Triton also following suit. Like we know for a fact that they won't take their business, but they didn't really go the next step of making it public, which is fine. That's their choice. You know what I mean? Like as long as we can speculate about it, yeah, uh, I, I think it's like completely reasonable. It'd be pretty tough if we couldn't message to the community like hey look there is fallout if you're a selfish person and uh you know take all these nefarious edges to try to be the best of the best um but you know again we st is it really all that audacious for them to make x amount of accounts and just get on sites that aren't policing it i mean what do you want them to do man i don't know it just feels like you know you've been caught with your hand in the cookie jar yeah you know, your mum sent you to the naughty step. Don't do it again. Mm -hmm. Like, just just go elsewhere. But but there's no reprieve here. No no one's gonna go and play water polo professionally or something. Like, just leave us alone. <laughs> there's money in the streets, man. Yeah, I there's guess money so. in the street. There's just there's, there's it's just too profitable to be very good at being very bad. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Can I just like hijack this conversation real quick yeah. and just give a massive shout out to this whole set? Like this is insane. Guys. Or we put it well in. The <laughs> we, uh, Fair play. Like look, look at this like production value, man. I love this. I wish uh, the people. I, the people. Bro, I wish we would have filmed the the behind the scenes yes. because Guapo. Guapo is a man possessed. Should have. Mm -hmm. I almost it. had like three heart attacks. That would have been great content. <laughs> he really did. He's, you should have seen his face when we uh, when we discovered the broken. Oh yeah, we should talk about that actually. There, there's there's a conversation to have there. Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, we get off the plate. We really thought we did it right, but uh, I had mentioned something just in passing right before we left, and I was kind of like, ah, what are the chances? But we got this hard shell suitcase to put the the computer in. We wrapped it in a massive comforter. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrapped it. Put foam on the inside to protect the guts. Just did all the things that you're supposed to do when you ship a computer. And then we put it in this hard case. And I looked at it and I just said, you know, there's this bar at the bottom that, that houses the, uh, the handle. handle. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't sit right with me. But what are we going to do? We're at the 11th hour. It's time to go. You know, this blanket's probably just going to be fine. Sure enough, we get here. And we're idiots, by the way. The fact that we didn't take off the tempered glass doors is just so, so amateur hour. Yeah, it really just is. Just so, what were we thinking? Like, like four screws, man. In my four head, like, and we're done. in it's my off. head, like, you just couldn't take it off. Yeah. Like, it was just a part of the, mm -hmm. the casing, you know? Uh, right. So we get here, and all of us go to bed, and Guapo, he's just like, you know, 
he can't I had to crack it open. he just had to crack it open and see the bad news yeah the tempered glass just shatters and of course it was almost certainly from resting on that that, that bar right yeah. it doesn't take much that that's the purpose of tempered glass is it just turns into to ice very quickly yeah. so yesterday obviously we can't do the pod we're looking at the computer and it just has like a million shards of glass in literally it. literally a million um <laughs> i put a picture up on on our twitter yeah. if you want to go to the only friends pod to see the pic uh and i'm like i'm just in total problem solving mode guapo's like well we're fucked <laughs> let's retire uh we owe andre 4k for the computer might as well throw this thing in the fucking dumpster and call you know, it a week I, I was honestly so depressed like the whole i actually slept good last night yeah. because i was like well i just want to find out if it made it you right. know, and if it didn't make it, well, fuck it. I can go to bed. Yeah. yeah and yeah. if it did, well, then I can go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the, the unknowing is what was eating it. So we get we get this whole plan together, right? I'm like, all right, look, I've built computers before. We're we're fine, man. We're we're just fine. All we have to do is we got to clean it, and to clean it, we just have to dissect it. So we we already have the door off. That's no problem. Let's fucking dig in. Start pulling out the guts. We got the graphic card out. We got the the uh, solid state drive out, the hard, the the main all hard the drive glass. out, all the glass, the SD cards, everything, right? Everything's out. So then I'm like, all right, we got to go to Walmart and get a shop vac. So we go to Walmart, we get a shop vac, bring it back here, we blow out all the glass from the casing and the housing. Uh, then we take the shop vac vac. Oh wait, sorry, we put the computer back together and uh, fire it up, and we get nothing. We hook it up to the... It turns on. We didn't have a monitor. Yeah, it turns yeah. on, but we didn't have a monitor. So we only had the, the TV and we get nothing. I'm like, oh, fuck, let's go, let's go get a monitor in case, you know, the TV is just shitty or something like that. So we run to Walmart. We take the shop back back. As we're returning, I look at Guapa. I go, did we empty that? <laughs> and he's like, oh, we only used it on below. I'm like, that would have been hilarious <laughs> if we just returned a shop back. Full of glass. Like full of, of tempered glass. Yeah. Brian, can you describe what that process was like returning to Walmart? It was simple. I walked in, I, I went to customer service and I was, they were like, what's wrong with it? I'm like nothing. It's just the wrong one. They're like, did you use it? I go, no. Like, okay. Going back on your card. <laughs> Hand me my receipt back and I'm no. on my merry way. Oh, I wish I had the balls to do that. I, wow. Yeah. I was hoping it wasn't me that had to do that, but I was uh, cool. You're cool. the manager, well, man. Well played. Cover. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart's hey, gonna come out listen, for us, man. Listen, if I can if I can save this company seventy five dollars, goddamn it, I'm gonna do it. That's right. That's more money for Burger yeah. Night. That's and right. It, well, technically, all we did was turn it on for like literally less than. I, I, so we like, we didn't even use it to its capacity. We just needed something that right. blew hot air exactly. and landed with sleeping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Got him. That's not a dad joke. Got That's a him. Rad joke. Me. I was. That I was a little tired. slow burn. There's no it. burn. I knew what you were doing. <laughs> Let, by, the way, by the way, in case anybody wants to know, Landon slept through all of this. All of this. All of it. He yes. went to bed before the mm -hmm. suitcase was cracked open, and he woke up sometime around 6 p.m. today. He didn't plug one thing in. <laughs> Not one goddamn thing. He's easy. <laughs> I'm the passenger princess. That's yes. right. He is Wait, the so you, you guys arrived around, what, well, same time as me, yes, yeah. but yesterday. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, then you slept. So by 9 a.m., we knew the computer was broken. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. you knew before you even went to sleep. Yeah. Well, Guapo knew. Right. Yeah. And he sent a picture to us. So I knew uh, as I was falling asleep. But I slept like a baby. Right. Woke up around. <laughs> how was that possible? Because I, I was so... <laughs> how do you sleep like that? I would be so stressed. Bro, th things either work or they don't. Right. It, we're in a very black and white world here. Like, if it doesn't work, we figure it out. Podcast or no podcast. There are only two outcomes. Yeah, right. exactly. You know? <laughs> like, Binary. It's it's like your your scale for women. It's the zero or one scale. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Jesus. Matt, Matt woke up and chose Easy. violence. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we already know that he doesn't kiss them. <laughs> or Guapo. This is why we give him a mic so he can fight back. Mm -hmm. um, so we go to Walmart. We return it. We get a monitor. Why do you do this? <laughs> why do you choose violence? Why are you uh, the I'm way to choose violence, are. man. <laughs> why are you the way you are? Uh, this is just re repayment for like 200 complete podcast where i can't take it so we come back here uh we hook it up to the new monitor nothing i'm like fuck okay so wapo's throwing the the the, the baby out with the bathwater again he's like well let's just get a flight back to vegas and fucking call it <laughs> it wasn't that bad he's got he's calling andre he's like i'm so sorry man like you know it's done it's over we fucked up and i'm like relax we got this man don't worry there's a service so i google 
and there's this thing called nerd squad oh uh, yeah which yeah. by the way i need to look i don't think i ever paid that guy uh <laughs> so you can schedule yeah, an appointment fun from him you can schedule an appointment for basically a repair a repairman to come to your house right 125 bucks he comes shows up today yeah uh, my gym. And he goes oh that's your problem and we're like what he's like oh the graphic card's a little bit loose so literally he just like wiggles it. it. Yeah. It's like works. I'm like, God damn it. That was the worst $125 I've ever spent. That's the best hourly he's ever had. It's not even close. Like he, he stuck around for like an extra 30 minutes just to make us feel like he did, did his job for yeah. sure. Uh, so yeah, we finally get it up and running. Uh, we, we have both pieces of the tempered glass off now for safety measures, of course. And uh, we spent all day setting up this beautiful impromptu set that you see before you i gotta tell you i'm glad the lighting worked out yeah it, yeah. it looks good it looks good now it because it's good. nighttime i'm very yeah. nervous for nice. tomorrow yeah the good? color the wow. colors are popping the yellow yeah. and blue your yeah. shot looks great mm -hmm. thank you thank you I, just me. for once i have the worst shot for sure um, right, you can sit over here tomorrow if you want no no that's okay i'm, I'm here for my my potted I'll tell you what we, we get a workout in in the morning mm -hmm. and then you come in with the tank top I'm in for that. And you and Conrad set. actually will be there. All right, sweet. If if I'm awake, well, that's fair. Maybe just Conrad then. Uh, uh, he's that. actually still in the one K, so we don't Real have him. Funny. Play, but shout out to Conrad. I uh, I'm happy that this all came together. It was a good test because we're mm -hmm. gonna have to do this all over again in the Bahamas tomorrow. So we're gonna be live again tomorrow at 10 a.m. That's gonna be our new time for the next two and a half weeks. Eastern. 10 a.m. Eastern. So that's so 7 a.m. Pacific. Nice you guys are gonna have to. Yeah, the the West Coasters, the dedicated ones, will be up at 7 a.m. That's right. Ready to go. If not, catch it on the replay. But yes. um, we're going to be we're going to be doing a show every day before play, both here in Florida and uh, in the Bahamas. So, you know, we got to get that early grind in uh, a little, little 10 a.m. I'm a little nervous about the sunlight. There's one wall, so to speak, that you guys can't see. That's uh, just all natural lighting, which I usually love natural lighting, but not in this setting, man. We're just giving up so much. EV at the tables, Matt. What are you going to do at 10 a.m.? I don't know. Run some spots before coming into the main, you know, just like a little preparation. Bro, if, meditate, go for a walk. If you're I not, shower. You if know? you're not ready yet, you're not okay. going to be ready tomorrow. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm ready for poker in Florida. Mm. Like, I obviously played PLO here quite a bit mm -hmm. last time, but I have zero clue as to how tournaments are played here. Oh, exactly and, the right, same. <laughs> and, and everyone that I've spoken to, they're like, Oh, dude, you're going to move here permanently. Like, you're just going to love it. Yeah. Everyone's just saying how crazy this is. So maybe I don't need preparation. Who knows? Nah, Nothing in that computer is going to help you for what you're <laughs> going to endure the next few days. I can so promise Where do these you people that. get their money from? This is 3500 American dollars. We're, you know? we're in Florida. This is the retirement capital of the United yeah. States. Let's go. Everybody who's ever accrued wealth throughout their lifetime moves here when they're 55. Okay. That's it. Easy. These are the people that you're balling out with, man. They're just, they're just here to fuck all the pros. Well, they can fucking try. They get me every goddamn time. <laughs> it's crazy how I'm just going to win the main as well. It's he has like, been calling this for a long had, time. You've had actually pretty good success. In I've had great yeah, what are you talking mediocre about? success. Well, you never won anything. Exactly. <laughs> but exactly. you've won dollars. Have yeah. a real American dollar. I have a second. I have a third. Mm -hmm. I have like a tenth. I have a bunch of like close calls. Yeah. I just get fucked every time. Do you though? Yeah. Three handed, second in chips. Hey, Jackson to Queens. Sounds like you did pretty good. First the chip leader. All the way down How many bigs? 35. All right, fair. All right, I'll let you off. <laughs> he, he was the only other pro. We were playing against a wreck, too. It was so brutal. That's, that's grim. Yeah. yeah I remember, that's, that's how. Oh, cool. actually, I might have been chip. I, I remember I had like three blinds after the hand. So I actually remember, that's covered. how tournaments work, right? You always get unlucky in the most crucial spot. Yeah, I, I know that's how it works. I just don't want to accept that. Yeah. You know, why, why does it have to work like that for me? Why can't I just be in God mode? Oh, well. Somebody's got to. Somebody's got to win. Somebody's just got to run so good that they. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny how I know someone that comes to mind when you guys say that. Yeah. Not to pat myself on the back, but as we uh, talk about God mode, let's, uh, let's kick it to throwback Thursday and revisit the Mike Postle scandal. God mode himself. Guy. So for those of you who are unaware of who Mike Postle is or why he's relevant, um, about four years ago, this man was a staple on the Stones Live live stream. It's a little redundant, but that's what it was. Stones Live. Uh, they would play these very big small stake games, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the game was generally like one, two, one, two, four. No, 
No, it was 136 was generally the stakes. Very smallish, but uncapped. And there are tens, if not hundreds of hours of him playing on this stream, mainly at the 136, um, 2510 kind of stake level. Many, many, many thousands of dollars deep. Uh, and, you know, this was the first real scandal uh, post Black Friday that had rocked the, the poker industry. So it all came to a head, actually, uh, kind of at, at, I don't want to say at my hands, but I was, I was involved in the, the, the whole bubbling over process. What happened was Veronica Brill, as everybody now knows, uh, was a commentator for Stones as well as a game runner. And for the better part of like six to eight months, she was getting to watch all of this play. She both a lot of them. A lot of commentary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she played some, but uh, so she saw a lot of the hands as they were playing out from the commentary booth. And then she was in the game a little bit here and there, as well as putting games together. And throughout all this, she noticed this massive outlier with Mike Possel. Everybody in Stones called this man a god. Best poker player to ever live. They couldn't believe how good he was at what he did. Uh, just made the sickest reads, the nastiest folds. Locked fucking in, man. This, this guy just seemed to have that it factor that you only really know about in the live realm. You know, those, those guys that are able to fold the second nuts when it's, when it's clearly obvious their opponents have the nuts and are able to call down with like king high in situations where they just know that their friend or their opponent is out of line, right? Like that was possible to a T and he was able to do it with remarkable accuracy. Veronica being a data scientist, kind of, it didn't sit right with her. She, you know, didn't pass the sniff test. Now, granted, it's, it's all just visual observation at that point. So uh, there's a little bit of confirmation bias, but it was enough for her to like kind of red flag it. It all comes to a head when they put a 2550 game together uh, and invite a bunch of influencers. So remember, they had been playing mostly small stakes over the course of like hundreds of sessions, like 100, 130 sessions, something along those lines for the better part of a year. Uh, this 2550 game crops up. They invite myself, Christian, and Marley to come uh, play and commentate. So I was, I think Christian and I both were playing to begin with, or maybe just me, and then Christian and Marley came in later. I can't recall. But either way, by the time it was all said and done, all three of us got to play. I had Postle to my immediate right, uh, and all I noticed was that he V-pipped a lot and seemed to be winning uh, with, like, pretty absurd hands. Like, you know, 5-4 off for, like, three bets pre-multi-way, just finding a way to win with one pair, that type of shit. But nothing really stood out to me. Uh, I didn't play that many hands with him, maybe only... You know, I think the, the entire session was like four or five hours. Um, and they were being very weird. So at the time in 2019, it was very commonplace if you were at Live at the Bike, if you were playing at Stones, um, and even Poker Go at that point, it was very commonplace to just keep your phone on you as an influencer, especially, you know, kind of uh, document as much of the game as possible, put it out on social media for people to see, try to drive eyeballs to the stream. That was very common. They were ridiculously anal. And they were, they had a security guard looking over the table. Uh, every time I pulled my phone out, they were like right on top of me, like flies on shit, you know, basically saying like, you know, you can't do this at the table. You have to step off the stage and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, this is so weird. Like this is a hole in the wall casino that I've never even heard of until today. And you guys like, don't want me to, to promote it. I, I don't understand what I'm doing here, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and a bit of a backstory, like I, I jumped through hoops to fucking get to this place. So it's not actually like a brick and mortar casino. California is different. So they couldn't facilitate wires. I couldn't send any money. And I wanted to take like 50K to play with. So ultimately I arrived at, I'm gonna take JetSuite X and fly into Oakland and then catch a ride with Veronica from Oakland down to Sacramento. It's like a, I think 60 to 90 minute drive, something like that. Um, and what ends up happening is I missed my flight because I was running late and a cop pulled me over a hundred yards away from the jet suite X hangar. I mean, like I was turning into the parking lot and he whips on his lights. I was like, you were going 55 and a 35 back there. I was like, I was literally next to another car. Why did you pick me? You know, I'm late for a flight. Go get that other fucking guy. We we're going the same speed, but nevertheless, uh, should have been a good omen for me to just like not try so hard and just give up. But ultimately I took the next flight, got there a little bit late. 
uh, the rest is kind of history. So after the session's over, uh, I hop in the booth for like the last hour because they were on delay and I do a little bit of commentary with Veronica. Once we wrap the commentary, she kind of like starts to question me. She's like, did you notice anything weird? Meanwhile, I lost. I lost and Chin got wrecked. Chin tried running a bluff. Uh, it wasn't against possible. He tried running a big bluff against uh, somebody else and lost like 20K. Marley, I think, like broke even-ish, but Possel made like this ridiculous fold against her where she flopped the nut straight and he just folded like top pair and a gut shot to the, to the second nuts. Just like insta muck to one bet. I was like, okay, this is a little sus. But she's like, did you notice anything weird? I'm like, not particularly. I mean, this guy seems like he plays a lot of hands and, and seems to find a way to win them, but also the game was stupid soft. So like... That doesn't seem that out of the ordinary, you know? Mm. Why, why couldn't you just play bad hands and win in a good game? Seems reasonable. Uh, she's like, what do you think about Possel? I'm like, you know, again, like nothing much. So then uh, JFK, Justin Caritis, the poker room manager, he kind of comes into the booth and uh, Veronica was like questioning him why they were being such hard asses about the cell phones. And he's like, well, you didn't hear it from me, but there's a huge scandal at Live at the Bike where uh, there's like this, this, this like cheating scandal that's going on there that nobody really knows about. And they're, they're trying to, to blame it on the phones. And, uh, you know, whatever. So we, we decided to take proactive measures. Now, the truth is, uh, that, was a, that was a half truth and a half lie. So what he was referring to is uh, that nonsense that kind of got, well, I don't know if it's nonsense or not, but the, the story that got drudged up recently with Hustler about Feldman and right. Ludacris. Yeah. Right. So yeah. all of that resurfaced. That was what he was referring to. Had nothing to do with cell phone devices. Uh, the reason why they actually got banned is because everybody in the room thought Possel was cheating. And they immediately wanted to uh, uh, get rid of any, any cell phone use at the table because they were afraid that that's how he was cheating. So... Uh, you know, we have this like weird back and forth and I just like ask him to show me around a little bit because I want to see their, their setup. And I noticed that like their server room is adjacent to the commentary booth. And the only thing that's separating it is an unlocked door. So I could literally, as a commentator, walk in there and out of there anytime I want. And I ask him about it and I'm like, you know, is this commonplace? He's like, uh, yeah, you know, um, it, it's... It's, it's relatively secure, yada, yada, yada. It's away from the stage or whatever. And then I start asking Veronica about it. She's like, oh, the players have access back there anytime they want. Like, Possel will literally walk back mid-session and, like, tell them that, like, uh, that his hand didn't read and his actual cards were this, that, or the other. Like, if ever they communicate to the dealer, like, oh, we can't see Mike's hand, he would just, like, walk back there and tell them what his hand was and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? But I don't think anything of it. I come home. And I just let it pass. The next day, or maybe two days later, Veronica goes public with her accusations that Possel has been super using the stream in some sort of way. She doesn't know how, but he's getting real-time information for sure. And he's, he's definitely cheating. And she releases it like a 10-minute clip of all the hands that are suspect and reasonings behind why she thinks they're sus. And I watch it at first, and I'm like, okay, like I understand how she could arrive at this, but it felt like a conspiracy theory video. Right. I'm just like, this isn't enough. Like, I don't. I didn't have her eight months of observation, right? So I'm just looking at this for the first time, and I'm just like, if somebody did this to me, I would be fucking furious. Mm. But uh, so, like, I'm in communication with her, and I was like, honestly, like, she was getting massive fallout. I was like, listen, like, you should just, you should just take it down, apologize, and rectify the situation as quickly as possible because you're messing with a guy's reputation, and it doesn't seem like there's there's much empirical proof. And so she was about to go that route when Ingram kind of stepped in, having seen all of that plus another, you know, few hours worth of, of hands. He was like, nah, this guy's super using. And that's where the snowball effect then began. He kind of jumped on it, was like full-blown investigation. And then, you know, as more and more started to leak out, uh, it became more and more apparent to me and Galfon and a few others who were like kind of watching from the sidelines this guy almost certainly was getting real-time information. Uh, and, you know, much like the, the most recent thing that happened with uh, the Jack 4 situation at Hustler, my instinct, having had the technology available to us in the studio, was, well, let's get to the how, right? Rather than try to, rather than try to speculate at if he cheated or not, let's just get to, was the system easily corruptible? Right. 
And the answer was clearly yes. Uh, I put out two kind of how to videos on our YouTube channel, like walking through the methodology through which he very likely could have cheated, whether he did or didn't, who knows? But I didn't care at that point. All I wanted to, or all I cared about was kind of demonstrating that this setup they have is shoddy as fuck. And if this man wanted to cheat, he had motive to, and he had access. Uh, from there, the snowball effect just kind of took off. The entire industry really ran with this. Uh, you saw Ingram doing deep dives on all the hands. He must have watched hundreds of hours oh of footage. God. Just lock the fuck in, Poppy. Very locked in. This is the first time we had an introduction to Landon, I think. <clears throat> you, were you, you were in those streams, yeah? No. No, I mean, I'm not saying you were on those streams. I'm no, saying I wasn't in the streams of Joe. You possibly. weren't even watching? I was in the, I was in the like, time stamping. That's what stuff. I mean. Yeah. I wasn't time stamping the streams. I was just in the chat, yeah. So you were, you were following along closely, though? Uh, after the fact. Like, I wasn't in the stream every single day, by any means. But I definitely like, looked through stuff and was active in the chat. But it was like your first introduction to live poker and live poker scandal, I guess. Yeah, that was my first, like, I guess, the big poker thing that happened during my, like, the... My start was the possible stuff, yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting way to break in. <laughs> um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this guy's just like playing hands where anyone that like has looked at poker as a whole would be very skeptical. But at the same time, it's hard to really make any accusation like that because in their instances, they're not that insane. But over a repeated sample... It's just too spooky, right? Like I, I remember seeing hands where he would just like fold boats or like call because folding would look almost too ridiculous right, right. kind of thing where when you add all the pieces up to the puzzle, the puzzle just looks like this guy straight cheating, but like who knows how. Yeah, there was never actually a, a full-blown smoking gun, but there's a collection of evidence that in my opinion uh, equates to a smoking gun. So there were a handful of situations. One... Uh, and, and pardon my memory being a little bit cloudy. It's been a long time. So I, I may get some of these details a little bit off, but, uh, one was he made a ridiculous river bluff where after, uh, after he made this like obscene bluff with a hand that like just should not have even gotten that far, the graphics then changed to giving him the nuts, uh, in a very, like, I, I don't exactly recall the details, but I remember we couldn't replicate it. Uh, on, on Andrew Milner's system. Like there was just no way to replicate it without actually uh, communicating with the person who was doing graphics. And Which is what Veronica said, right? He would go back into the room and say, oh, correct, that was wrong. I actually had this. Correct. So yeah. on the 30 minute delay, what's happened there is he's won the pot, realized how fucking absurd it's going to look. And he's just walked back and said, hey guys, I had the nuts. That, that could have been one possibility. Another possibility could have been that uh, the person running the graphics uh, or the server or whatever was also just like in on it, communicating to him uh, okay. and just knew to cover in that particular instance. Right. They had a lot of like throughout the, the hundreds of hours of footage we watched, there was a lot of uh, graphical errors that were a little bit off, right? Some of them were easily explained away, but... The, the nine eight of spades one was one where it was just like, we can't replicate this. Right. Like when you can't duplicate an error, it just, it seems a little bit sus, obviously, uh, especially when there were like easy explanations as to what it potentially was. And back then the system itself was a lot less secure. So you could run a second instance of the stream mm. and this is what we suspect happened, uh, but you could run a second instance of the stream and make it go live on the intranet. So uh, basically the in-house network and uh, it was accessible. And, you know, we found some photos of Mike, like, leaning back or walking away from the table where you could see his phone screen. And it was just pure blue. Now, uh, the reason that's relevant is because when you look at the server side of GFX, it's, uh, you use a gamma key so that you can lay the graphics over your uh, actual footage, right? So it's the equivalent of a green screen. The only thing is it doesn't have to be green. You can use whatever gamma key you want. Like yeah. we personally use a very bright blue. Yeah. And we saw that same bright blue screen where it's just like he's almost certainly just getting the graphics fed to him and uh, seeing him in real time. That's where Crotch Theory Optimal came from. Right. You know, where he was constantly looking down. He wore that big saggy hat. Yeah. There was also um, speculation that he potentially had a bone conducting headphone in his uh, oversized uh, Under Armour hat 
That's, that was a leading theory for a while. There's also Vato, the vibrating ass theory optimal. That was a joke, though. <laughs> nah, it's real, man. No, Joey, it's Joey said real. it. You mean it. He means it. No, no. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, Maybe. I, look, anybody who's out there who's willing to wear a vibrating butt plug to uh, up their win rate, God bless you. Yeah, I mean, you just I'm here deserve, deserve it at that yeah. point. You, well, <laughs> yeah, if, if it's going to increase your hourly to by 10%, you goddamn deserve it. Uh, it's interesting because I remember the, the, the defense side um, at the time, uh, people just saying, you know, like these mistakes happen with RFID and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was, I was kind of like living at King's Resort, um, running the production for them. And... I'd been doing that for about a year and a half when this kind of um, when this broke out, and I was thinking, I was like, I don't think we've ever once had the incorrect cards picked up by the RFID over the last year and a half. Like we're talking, Kings Resort was streaming like three, four times a week, so we're talking like hundreds of streams where we've never had someone place their cards on the RFID reader, mm -hmm. and for the RFID reader to feed it back is incorrect. So that whole like, oh, it was just a graphics mistake. That's bullshit. Uh, yeah, there, there was a, um, there's effectively a fail safe measure put in place where uh, the same, well, it's not even just fail safe. It's just part of the technology, but the same card can't be read twice. And that, that was happening consistently. These instances of like cards being shuffled from reader to reader, being read twice, things of that nature. The system didn't work that way. Uh, Guapa, I just shared with you on Discord uh, one of the videos I put together. But um, basically, I went through and I demonstrated like how the system works and all the ways that it didn't add up with the inconsistencies that we were seeing on the stream. And you know, we had we had clear knowledge of what system they were using, how they were securing it, if they were choosing to secure it, and, and things of that nature. Um, so you know, we were able to kind of crack down on this and not just get to a logistical how did he do it but also get to the point of how probable was it that he did it and we got to a reasonable degree of confidence to the point where uh he attempted to actually sue everybody who was speaking out about it uh for liable so he filed uh he filed a defamation lawsuit against myself hulk ingram run at once yeah. um Veronica and oh, uh, Crush Live Poker. Uh, basically, everybody in the industry that ever made a video about. Uh, it. I remember Mid Galfon Challenge getting a, a text from the CEO of Run It Once saying, "Henry, we appreciate uh, that you know you're backing up Phil and you're backing up Rio because I, I had said something, mm -hmm. but they sent me a, a screenshot of uh, the lawsuit that had been filed against, and they're like, we don't want you to get dragged into this. Yeah, so yeah. please stop ripping into this guy. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's I was like, okay." I mean, obviously, it was very flimsy to begin with. Like, there's just so much that protects the public sphere when it comes to uh, being able to share public information. And, like, once a story catches a certain level of popularity, like, it's just kind of fair game. But in any event, uh, you know, we all did collectively speak and, you know, kind of ask, like, what's, what's everybody's plan of attack? Um, I know that Jonathan Little and uh, Bart, uh, Bart Hansen hired uh, a lawyer out of Florida, I, I believe. They filed an anti slap or at least they were in the process of filing an anti-slap. Mm. Uh, myself and a few others had talked to uh, Max, and we were basically just waiting to be served. So it was like, don't, don't take on any cost until he actually serves you with the papers, and then we'll file the anti-slap and move forward. Veronica was very, uh, as she should be, she was kind of the face of this whole thing. So she was very forward in, um, in, in making an anti-slap motion against him. Perkins actually backed her in that uh in that anti-slap lawsuit and i believe what ultimately ended up happening was he never served anybody and then either didn't show up for the anti-slap hearing or was ruled against but in any event he didn't show up okay fairly so, confident he yeah I, I think he also didn't show up but i think that resulted in him being ruled against All right uh so in any event that's going to bring us to current day which is uh what's most relevant now so veronica won her anti-slap which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the, the end result was he owes her her lawyer fees, which was something to the tune of like 125K, um, which, you know, all of us understood was never going to turn into anything, right? Like, it's just not possible. 
unless he's dumb enough to go back and play poker again. <laughs> and more importantly, not play cash, where he actually has to deal with taxes and W-2s and things of that nature. So earlier this week, earlier last, or late last week, I think it was late last week, uh, it kind of surfaced that Paso had final tabled an event in Biloxi, Mississippi, and he was playing for six figures. Veronica hurries up and scrambles and gets a lien filed against uh, his winnings. So um, the, the uh, tweet here says, Counsel for Angry Pollock succeeded in having a garnishment writ against Mike Postle and Bo Biloxi notarized by Harrison County Clerks of Court as of late yesterday. Now, there was a lot of reporting going on saying that, uh, and it was actually coming from Rounder Life, the Rounder Life account, which is uh, a, f a magazine that was formerly either owned or ran by Postle. Uh, so they're, they're very much uh, in the same camp. They said that uh, Postle's winnings had been withheld. But uh, in reading this thread from um, Veronica's lawyer, it seems as though they were a little bit too late. So uh, I'm just going to browse through this really quick because I think it's a very well-written thread. And, uh, you know, this six-parter will kind of demonstrate what the process was and how it worked out. Uh, you can just click in it, Guapo. Uh, so he says, late Monday, I was alerted that Possel had reached the final table at Beau Rivage main event. Uh, Angry Pollock and I connected to explore seeking a writ of garnishment before Possel was paid. Her California attorney worked diligently to get me the information I needed. Mississippi does not, or sorry, Mississippi does have electric court filing. However, the first step of enrolling California judgment could only be done by filing physical documents and fees at the courthouse. The enrollment of the judgment was made in Harrison County where the Beau Rivage is located. A garnishment writ was issued and sent to the general counsel for MGM. Unfortunately, by the time the writ was served, according to lawyers for MGM, the bow was no longer holding the funds. I assume Possel had just been paid. There is still upside to what transpired. Veronica and I are grateful for the poker community. Whoops, that's skipping one. Reds are tough. Reds are tough. Oh, it's weird. It's out of order. Okay. The judgment will remain in good will remain good in Mississippi for seven years and can be re renewed for unlimited number of seven-year periods. Now that the judgment is enrolled in Mississippi, a writ of garnishment could be issued electronically much quicker than paper filing at the courthouse. Veronica and I are grateful for the poker community for bringing attention to the fact that Postle was in that spot. If Postle steps foot in another Mississippi casino, please alert me so the new garnishment can be issued and served before he can get paid. Uh, where's six of six? Okay. I did not and will not ask for any fees for my work on this. I don't have a dog in the fight other than to be a small part of helping our community have more integrity, transparency, and accountability. So if I'm understanding this correctly, at a bare minimum, uh, this will now follow him around Mississippi and can be, uh, can be issued in a moment's notice. So they can file everything electronically, which is great. Um, it, it, at a minimum, it keeps him out of Mississippi casinos. At a maximum, it potentially gets Veronica paid back her, uh, her legal fees from this past anti-slap lawsuit. Now, um, I'm not sure how this works as far as like carrying from state to state, but it does seem as though the more of these uh, that are passed, the easier they become to file in the future, which if that's the case, I don't know if they can proactively do this in states like New Jersey, Nevada, California. I mean, California, he's already ruled against, I suppose. But maybe New Jersey, Nevada, um, if you want to go so far as to like go to like Council Bluffs, Iowa. Uh, you know, basically anywhere that there's a major casino where you could potentially... What's up? Florida. Yeah, Florida. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder... There's probably a good what chance he's here. Maybe, maybe we'll see him. I think there's like a high probability, right? You think that we'll see him? I mean... Is he yeah. Good? It's not that far from Mississippi. I know, but after all this happened, he's going to show his face again? This to to be fair. I mean, it he, sounds like he's pretty arrogant. I mean, he so. did try. He got he his player card He wouldn't cheat on live stream again, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that argument. I'm not saying he, he wouldn't. He wouldn't have. do it again, right? It, it wouldn't happen again. Yeah, we should invite him to We should invite, invite him, to him on the pod. I think we should have him on Hustler. Invite him on the pod. Let's have For him sure. on. Let's get Let's his, his on. side of this. That's, he's here, right? Yeah. He might be here. He's staying with us. <laughs> the hunt is on. He He's set upstairs. this up. <laughs> we, we should make him the the fucking uh, the runner. The runner, yeah. The runner. That oh would have been God. that would have been the greatest thing on earth. If he was the runner. If he was the fucking runner. Except if you catch him, you don't win a platinum pass. You just get to 
people. Punch him in the face. Shit out of them. <laughs> you just get to no chicken violence. quid fight violence him. Is bad. Uh, so three rounds, I five mean, minutes apiece. Let's go. My best guess is that you won't see him in tournaments anymore. I assume that, and, and you know what? Maybe that's not even fair because he's probably been grinding. Cash. I was going to say, like, I, I, I don't think that's true. I, I think this is just a case of he's only just been caught because he made a big FT. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if he's been playing. He tried. He used. He had to. He, he used his. He's, he's been playing. Like he, just, he, he, he didn't like just, just made... randomly final table right, one exactly, tournament, right? Exactly. Like he. So he used his first and middle name for his Michael players Lawrence. card. You ever seen Michael Lawrence out there? Yeah. Uh, and Get he wore out. like a very shoddy disguise. Okay. Uh, to try to to sneak it through, but the poker, the poker. This is this is why I can't believe we didn't catch the runner, man. The poker, fuck me. They're, yeah. They're on it, man. They're on it. Dude, on, on day one of the main tomorrow, I'm just going to be going around every table, mm -hmm. just eyeballing <laughs> everyone. Just yep. like, You're going to be too busy licking your chops, man. I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm, going to be going, uh, I'm going to be too busy going seven-handed to every flop, like yeah. in three-bit pots. I don't know if it matters that much, but I, I kind of wish that um, that information about uh, wasn't that public. So like, now he obviously knows he can like, right. never play in Mississippi or Varnish. Yeah, I think that that is the downside, right? Mm -hmm. Is that well, it's sort it's, of it's, if it prevents him from playing, it's also like, good we still for, get. Yes, it's good for Mississippi that he's probably not going to play there anymore. So that, yeah. that's obviously a positive. Um, he's just probably going to go. I mean, I, I'm I'm a fan of looking at the silver lining, but America's fucking huge. It you is. know, it's like yeah. it's like getting barred from Slovakia and then just <laughs> like <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go to Spain and play then. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. you yeah. guys forget how big this country is, right, like. Right. Yeah, I imagine he can just like. I wonder what what the likelihood would be that he would get caught if he like went and hung out in Texas. You let, know, let the poker community cook. You know, let us cook. We'll we'll get Let's it. Let's cook, we'll figure baby. It out. We we love. <laughs> We're cooking right now. Cooking something up. We love a good motherfucker who's cheating. <laughs> oh, we love it, man. We love. It. Just, just try it on my watch. See what happens. Well, what happens? Well, yeah. <laughs> what, well like, what happens? Well, they just, fucking they get shit. they get away with it. Some of them get like they twenty x their banned. their followings hey, on Instagram. I'm they get invited banned. onto TV and shit. Like, come on, man. And, and then some of them just multi account and make more money. So. More, right. money. We, more we, money. More we need, money. <laughs> we need a better system than this. I mean, we do have to look out for each other. Though. They do have to look out for the tortoise in the main. Hey, you gotta look hey. Out for, watch out for the tortoise in the main. <laughs> He's coming, He's coming at you slowly. He's coming at you slow. He's creeping, baby. He's creeping. <laughs> slow and steady, baby. It's gonna take me uh, three weeks. One, but I'm gonna do it. We, we should have like a friendly last longer between all of us that are playing the main. Why? Well, man is a lock. Yeah. Well, there you go. Of course, um, a lock. The, you know what? It's the, hard to get. It's hard to get further than one. The the fair handicap would be we do it last longer, but he's only allowed one bullet. And we're allowed as many as we want. <laughs> I'm only playing one bullet. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that would be away. a fair handicap. Fire away. The tortoise has to bag, otherwise he's hey, fucked. Float that tortoise. Float, float just... that prize pool for me. And do, can we just bet push-ups? Yeah, push-ups are good. Last first, uh, last loot loses all the push-ups. Oh, for bullets. Wow. Right? So each bullet is twenty. Wow. So there's no winner. There's just one loser. Yeah, yeah. That's brutal. Th those one, are and one jack Those are very clear friend <laughs> bets. You know, friend friend bets don't involve winning. It's just not losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. We bet on. Uh, we st I still have to count. We bet on the Nelly song "Dilemma," where they go, "Fuck." <laughs> where they go. <laughs> we bet over under forty. So if somebody knows the actual number in that song, like, what's the chorus? Can you can you help? Uh, love you. Wait, oh. now, is that the? Need you, Nelly. Yeah. Yeah. Great song. Oh, Love you. Oh, I think it was, oh. <laughs> so we bet on over under no 40. No matter what I do. Yeah, oh. oh. All right, all right, all right. right. Let's, let's that song. Stop it. Stop so it. if someone Behave. knows the over under and how many times they do like that, that oh. <laughs> it's, oh, if it's over 40, I win. If not, Matt wins. But All right, just uh, listen to the song. It's a great song. I have to <laughs> tell you, I don't like my side, but I do like the fact that he's not going to count if it's more than 40. Stop the count. I uh, saw so, so somebody just pointed out it's the song where she's texting on XL in the music video. Do you remember that? She <laughs> yeah, had yeah. one of those Nokia slide phones yeah. and yeah. she just yeah. got XL spreadsheets so she's texting <laughs> into XL. I've, like, never, I've never seen the, the music video around. Really. Uh, Have you not? No. Oh, dude. This is before my time. Oh, this is just uh, it's great content. Really great is content. great. Really is fantastic stuff. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we are, we're here. We're here. We're here for the next, we're here till Monday at least. If somebody Hopefully. final Hopefully. tables or wins the main, we'll be here till Tuesday. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we're going to do a morning podcast tomorrow, 10 a.m. And then we're going to have the weekend off to get some sun, you know, win some flips, go deep in a main or two. Oh, wait, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday, baby. Oh, okay. Right. Last part of the week. We, we, can, we can pull it together. Then. Yeah, we're going to pull it together. All right. You know. Got rest. Mike Lawrence out there in the field. We got to take care of some business. <laughs> Jesus. Michael. Oh, Michael. Mikey boy. Let's get it, baby. Put a bounty on his head. What, what, are you, what are you thinking? I mean, be, be it's careful. a little aggressive. Of he was just thinking. <laughs> he was thinking. Be careful, there was clearly no plan attached to that one. Uh, I mean, if somebody, if, if somebody busts him, if they can get proof that they busted him out of the tournament. Um, you can come on the podcast. Before the money. It has to be before the money. You can't. If you cash it. So if you bust him before. <laughs> well, if he cashes, you don't have to bust him. You just have to tattle, tattle on him so we can get this fucking writ that, against that's him. That's even better. Yeah. Fuck that, man. Paperwork's just a headache. Pay someone else to do it. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's why she got a lawyer team. Yeah, that's fine. Someone else takes care of it. Yeah, that's true. I do feel like this is a bit underwhelming for a throwback Thursday because it hasn't been all that long since the uh, since the Apostle case was a thing. But I did want to bring it up and kind of give a history of it because, oddly enough, even though it doesn't seem like it's been that long, it's been almost four years. It's been a while. And uh, some people in this room it's weren't even in poker yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's like pre-pandemic, you know? man. That, that's true. That's crazy. Like the pandemic Man, sucked a decade yet. out of us. <laughs> like the two years felt like ten, and it it felt like Mike Postle did this like a decade ago. But no, I, I was just—I heard he actually brought on the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I think it might <laughs> be the, to to just get into hiding. Yeah, rumor was he caused the pandemic. He's patient, patient zero. zero. He went yeah. to Wu Tan, wherever it was. <laughs> Wu Tan, Wu Tan, Wu Tan, Wu Tan clan. He went to Wu Tan. He went to Wu Tan. You're literally thinking Wu Tan clan for sure. Yeah. Oh um, man. Yeah. Cash rules everything around me. Cream. <laughs> dollar dollar bills, y'all. All right. What we're gonna get demonetized, so relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a spot. <laughs> Spot on. Man. <laughs> Don't worry, they already demonetized us for uh, Nelly and. Um, oh yeah, my Kelly, Kelly Rowland. My Kelly Rowland spot on too. Uh, what, what was the what was the animal that Stan Marsh fucked in uh, South Park that led to the pandemic? Oh, Am I the only God. one who watched this? No, a I pangolin. Just, it was a pangolin. pangolin. It was yeah, a pangolin. It was a pangolin. <laughs> that was actually possible. It's a reenactment of Stan Marsh is actually possible. Yeah. I, I remember seeing that adjacent do sitting on the couch, yes. Oh, man, you have to watch. That season was fucking incredible. I, I'm not the biggest South Park fan, but, you know, I've tuned in as much as I can throughout the years. That, se- that pandemic season and the pandemic special were just, like, next-level comedy that I can't believe we are seeing it to 2023. Just... So absurd. He's with Mickey Mouse in China, <laughs> fucking a pandolin or pangolin or whatever the hell they're called in order to create a pandemic. Oh, man. I like pangolins, uh, man. They're cool. They're like big turtles. Bro, I watched this. Like I, thought dragon it was, I thought it was fake. I didn't even realize it was a thing. A pangolin? Yeah. No, they're real. I realize that now. I mean, the, the in-house law team that they must have oh my god South Park. incredible <laughs> like, they just have to have they truly give the, me faith that it's impossible to be canceled it's brilliant like <laughs> uh, i mean to to have that in 2023 where yeah, everyone so is biting cool. their you know, tongue the, the first year that that came out i was in ninth fucking grade man mm. i was in ninth grade Jesus. in mr bowser's health class mm-hmm. and we're talking about it, he goes yeah. you guys should watch that smut yeah <laughs> that yeah smut. I, I remember, I mean, this is my, my, my stepdad's fault entirely because I was about four at the time, which means my younger brother was like two. Uh, we visited my, my nan and, and for some reason at 9 a.m. in the morning to keep us entertained, he was like, well, the boys can just watch South Park. Yeah, cartoons. And uh, yeah, my mom rolls out of bed. Uh, this is before she's had a cup of tea and cigarettes. She just sees South Park on the TV. And it was, <laughs> let me just put it to you this way. My dad slept on the couch for about a week. And uh, <laughs> South Park was banned in our household for the better part of 15 years. So, <laughs> so uh, even to this day, like if me and my brothers like say anything related to South Park, I'm like, oh, you guys just fucking idiots watching that shit. <laughs> my best friend, Jace, uh, yeah. did maybe the best Cartman impersonation oh, so good. I've ever heard. And, you know, we're like, we're like 15 years old so it was just like <laughs> he incredibly is the Cart- he's the cartman of our group he so really like, is he really is it's great you got to go home uh, that's <laughs> so brilliant. good i can't do it justice uh that's gonna be a wrap for us today uh if you guys see michael lawrence out on the prowl be sure to alert the authorities let us know here <laughs> at the only friends podcast we'll contact angry pollock and her uh her lawyer team so that we can garnish those wages we're all about justice here at the only friends podcast 
Uh, don't forget that we have a Poker Out Loud Academy, March 20th to the 23rd. There are still seats available for that. If you are interested in attending, head over to academy.solveforwide.io. It's a four day long academy. Day one and day three are theory, um, strategy construction from the ground up. We're basically gonna teach you all of the principles and heuristics that we spoke about on the study podcast, if you guys happen to tune in for that one. Day two and day four, you actually play Poker Out Loud yourself. Uh, from start to finish, it's an eight hour day each. You'll speak your strategy out loud when it's your turn to act. And we will be in the commentary booth kind of pointing out what you're getting correct in real time and what you're kind of missing in real time. You'll have that video available to you forever. So you can always go back and look at it, study the spots, study our feedback, study your mistakes, etc. cetera. Um, there is no on second thought this Monday with us traveling. Uh, it'll return the following Monday. Matt Hunt will be launching a new primer course. Uh, for those of you who are uh, familiar with the former primer course, We've decided it's a little bit outdated, so we're gonna revamp that and start from fresh. You can look for that somewhere near the last weekend of uh, of January or the first week of February. I think we're aiming for a February 2nd launch. Other than that, we will be back 10 a.m. tomorrow, East Coast, 7 a.m. Pacific, early one for you guys. Uh, that's gonna be our new time slot for the next couple of weeks until we get out of the Bahamas. We're looking forward to shipping the main here in, uh, in Florida. Henry already called it. It's wild, man. Portis is going to final table. It's going to be a great time for everybody. Uh, and then we got PCA for the next two weeks from beautiful Nassau at the Baja Mar. So we'll be coming to you guys live five days a week. As always, we'll see you guys in the morning. Peace.